Hello everyone, welcome back to Explore Electronics. Uh, in this video, let's write a simple program using structures in C. But before that, let's understand the rules that we need to follow before we initialize the structures. So as you can see here, the individual members inside the structure template cannot be initialized. That means when we write the structure, the members inside that structure, we cannot initialize them individually. And the order of values enclosed in braces must match the order of members in the structure definition. That means suppose we have a structure called student inside which we have student name, roll number and marks. So when we are initializing the values, we have to initialize in the same order. That means first it should be the name, then roll number, then marks. So we need to follow that order. It is permitted to have a partial initialization. That means suppose if there are three members in of the structure, if there are three members inside the structure and if you wish to initialize only two of them, then that is also fine. That means we can partially initialize the structure. For the one that we don't initialize any value, the value will be automatically taken as the default values. So for example, if you're not initializing any value for an integer member, then zero will be assigned. And for strings, null character will be assigned. So these are the default values that the compiler will assign if we don't initialize them. So we can initialize the structure partially as well. And as we all know, we have compile time and runtime initialization for structures also. So compile time is nothing but we can initialize it like this. Suppose we have a structure like this and we need to create the objects of the structure and initialize the values like this. So this is called compile time initialization. But the runtime initialization is nothing but taking the values from the user. So here what we are doing, we are just looping through and then taking the values for these structure members. So how we are doing, we are just using a for loop here and then we are looping through this and individually we are updating the member data. So here's a simple program that is written using structure. So here what we are doing, we are just collecting the data for five students. So we already know that this is our structure student and we have uh, declared three members inside this that is name, roll number and marks. And since we are taking the data for five students, this is the array that we are pointing to the structure. That means this S of five is the array. That means we are having five objects for this student structure. So how we can use this and initialize the data and print them? Let us see. So in main, what we are writing, we have declared i. So this is for using in the for loops. Now uh, we are asking the user to enter the information of five students. So using the printf statement, we are displaying that on the screen. Now for storing the information, we need to have one for loop. So this block, what you're seeing here is for storing the information. And after this, for displaying the info, same information, we have one more for block. So this is how we can do this. Just write a for loop. Since we are taking for five students, let's say i begins with zero and less than five. So we are incrementing i. And then what we are doing, trying to do here is we are asking the user to enter the details for uh, roll number wise, for example, say we are saying for roll number, first time the roll number would be 1. Since we are pre-incrementing i, so the roll number starts with 1. So what we are doing, we are saying roll, uh, for roll number 1, enter first name. Once we enter the name, then it will ask enter marks. So for roll number 1, it is done. It's, it has taken the data. Now again, the i will be incremented and i will be 2 now. So now what it will be asking for roll number 2. Since i has become 2 here, it will display row for roll number 2, enter first name and then enter mark. So like, that, like this, it will go on for 5 students. So after uh, uh, collecting all the data of the 5 students, we are just having one more for loop. So before that, just displaying one heading called displaying information. And here using one more for loop, we are just displaying, printing them, printing one by one. So what we are printing, roll number i plus 1 because i starts with 0 here. So we just we're just saying i plus 1 for the first time. And then name and uh, we are just using the puts. You know why we use put is to write down the string. So puts s of i dot name. So here you can observe we have used something called dot. So this dot is 
an operator that we should use to in order to get the value of this member data. For example, if you need to access any of this member data of a structure, we can use through this dot operator. So this S is our array to this structure that we have created here. So using this, you can use the dot operator S dot name. So I is used to specify which data that we are getting. For example, if you want to get student three data, that means I will be three here. So it will, it will go and fetch the third student's name. So that is why we have to use this dot operator and access the members. Same way we have access the marks. So we are just printing the name, roll number, name and marks of all the students. So this is how we can uh, use the structures and get the data of multiple students and display them. So let's run this program and see how the output will up and see the output. So here it is saying enter information of five students and first time as we saw here so this is what it is showing here for roll number one one it is taking from this for loops i value okay so it is saying enter roll number one for roll number one enter first name so let's say we have en entered some name here and press enter it will ask for marks suppose we give the marks so now it's asking for roll number two so what is the name that you are going to give for roll number two So likewise, it will ask the data for all the, so you can just randomly give some data and check the output. So at the end, it will display all these data that it has taken. So it's asking for all the data all after, after we enter the data for all five students, it's going to display here, displaying the information and it is displaying all the data related to the five students that we have entered. So this is a simple program we can write using the structures. Thank you.